Good morning, everybody. Uh, Dr. Masban is going to be starting our conference today uh, with some introductions and uh, letting you know where we're heading with the, with the team. So glad to see everybody today. Um, we're going to be transmitting this via um, multiple streaming sources. So it'll be available. OK. Let me start with an introduction, and then I would like to invite Dr. Mitchell to present the slides. Hello, everyone. Hello to anyone from all over the world today. Uh, all you have joined this meeting, uh, Larkin's Team 11 meeting with uh, research department and founder of the hospital. Firstly, I'd like to thank your interest and enthusiasm for joining Larkin Networks. And I hope that the growth of the network's collaboration and the retainment of members' connections over the time, because we have loyal members who have worked with us uh, from two years ago, and they are continuing their collaboration with us. Also, we are proud of new people who are joining uh, our networks daily, in a daily basis. So. Uh, we see that many people well, um, with their passion are joining our networks and research department activities. So uh, I hope that all of these assets will enable us to organize a journal, academic channel, and a nonprofit foundation in the long term. Let me introduce myself. I'm Seema Marzban, physician, PhD in health system administration and MPH in healthcare leadership with over two decades of academic and executive roles. Always in interest, always I'm interested in research leadership, quality improvement and systems development in healthcare organizations. So delighted to work with an organization, Larkin Health System and Larkin Community Hospitals that values the talent and capabilities of all countries graduates and provides them with an atmosphere of growth and prosperity. We have managed to bring together a set of valuable inputs to achieve unique and different results. First of all, uh, a talent leadership. Dr. Mitchell provides all of us scientific support, leadership support, we have a great network and exceptional intelligence and passion we have gathered from medical graduates worldwide, virtual network management and real-time communications and really uh, approachable and you know, capable leaders in Team 11 who supported this network oh, and right. activities. Brilliant results have been achieved in two years, and the team members and Larkin have benefited from those results, which we received. To, uh, we will review all of those uh, results together today during the presentation of Dr. Mitchell. But indeed, the capacity of this group and this network is beyond these results. And we can think and plan for higher horizon and more effective collaborations in a way that has more number and quality publications, more targeted impact on the health system of participating countries and quality and quantity of Larkin services and Team 11 members, positions and accomplishments later. I would like to invite Dr. Jack Michel, uh, the leader of this network, founder and supporter of all of us to start presentation and share achievements, the current status of Team 11 and the future plans for this team. Dr. Mitchell, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Marzman. You, you have control of slides, right? Um, well, so, so I think most of you may have been aware how the team started. This was kind of an out uh, outsourced of the COVID pandemic. And then uh, initially we started with uh, contact tracing and then we evolved to um, different things, uh, research and even vaccination. Uh, many of you helped with that. Um, and so, uh, you know, the, the 
we've been able to, to make significant progress. I mean, I don't, I don't think we need to talk too much about uh, the health system. I think you're all kind of aware of, of what we have. Let's skip through the slide. Let's show them the numbers of, um, next slide. So the, 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 the point is, you know, we have uh, thousands of people from various countries that um, are part of this team. And our goal is to try to kind of channel, channel your energies to, so that we can be more efficient in, um, in, in being of service to what your ultimate goal is, whether it's getting into residency training or whether you're just uh, on a research track. We're also interested in knowing country specific issues uh, that you might be interested in looking into your particular country. Particularly we're interested in, in healthcare disparities. Um, so, I mean, our goal is we'd like to be your a research platform. We'd like to mentor, uh, collaborate. Um, hopefully we'll all engage in publications and work together. Uh, next slide. You wanna go through, through the your roadmap since it's yours, <laughs> Dr. Marsman? <laughs> yes, let me. Um, we have uh, a data set that records all of activities that is developed and ideated in our team 11 and in our clinical programs. You know that we have 41 clinical programs. Some of them are accredited and we have residents and fellows who are developing their ideas for research. So we develop this dat data set and database to record all of those activities, keep a track of our all of those efforts and then mentor and guide people about how to turn their ideas to a research project and then publication. The first phase of this roadmap is developing your idea. If you have an idea about research to improve something, to cover a practice or knowledge gap, to enhance uh, the workflow or practice environment in your system, anything. If you, if you have ideas about review of evidence, if you have ideas about case series, case reports, or uh, clinical trials, experimental design of, of the project, any idea that you have, you can fulfill the form that you can see in the left corner of your screen. So that's the job form. Uh, we call it 610, that is ideas for research. Then the research proposal and ideas would be uh, submitted to research committees, to research department, and we would assign faculty and the collaborators from Team 11 or residents from our departments. So uh, that's our role to help you to form a team for your research ideas. And then if it needs a IRB application, we would help with the form that you can see in the middle of your screen in the right side. That's 612 form. And also when all of these activities have been done, and you uh, make your manuscript ready for publication, there is another form that, uh, that is recorded in our database. It is called 614, that is pre-publication uh, uh, inquiry in our data set. So we would record all of the uh, projects inside our department and we are here to help you, to support you, to mentor and guide your projects in any way that we can, including scientific, scientific mentorship and guidance, including uh, connecting other people who are interested in your topic and idea. If you're satisfied to invite other people, we will help you to, to have uh, people from uh, specialty programs, from Team 11, from people we know, uh, from faculty who have some uh, research interest in those fields. And if you want to publish something with Larkin's affiliation, we would supervise and mentor and recommend you the best ways 
with our team's assistance. That's the roadmap of the Team 11, just to provide more resources for your activities. Dr. Mitchell. So this is, uh, I think this is only the countries that, um, uh, of people that participated in the, in the survey, right? Uh, yes. So yes. you can see that there's, there's uh, I think uh, obviously uh, after the United States, there's, um, these are people that signed up for this activity, right? So you can see all across the world from Algeria to, uh, uh, to Ukraine, there's, there's, uh, people involved in pretty much um, uh, uh, many countries. Uh, let's go to the next slide. And so we did a, a, a survey that we sent you. Um, and actually, can we post the survey, Sujan, on the chat? So if you haven't done the survey, uh, we'd be interested in knowing um, what your research skills are. Uh, there will be, a, you have multiple choice there to answer. Um, and this is kind of the survey we got from the participants today um, that filled this out prior to the, um, to the Zoom uh, live. So um, you can see that there's, a, there's, um, uh, there's kind of a, 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 a wide range of research skills here. Uh, let's keep going. Next slide. Uh, this is, uh, breaks it down by whether people are proficient, uh, almost proficient, experienced, uh, beginners. Uh, and you can see that uh, quite a few people that are either proficient and almost proficient and experienced. So that's good. Uh, that's a good sign, especially when we're looking at um, putting together our own journal. Uh, we, 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 so I think the next step is going to be for Dr. Marsman to sit down and, and, and figure out how, how we structure that. Next slide. So this is kind of a summary of, of what the team has done so far. Um, we've had people that have either been an MPH or, um, or fellowships or master's programs. We've also had people that have gone to the, uh, attending the Harvard Medical School Foundation of Clinical Research, and we're doing some work with the team uh, uh, at Hopkins. Um, next. Slide. And uh, I think you, you know about the project we did in Ecuador with uh, using the electoral model for vaccinations that recently got published. Next. And so these, this is the, uh, this is actually historical for Larkin Health Systems. And you can see 2021, basically we, we like more than doubled uh, our, our numbers. And uh, so far in, uh, we're still not in May yet, and we're up to 64 publications. So this is actually working and is creating um, uh, uh, PAMD uh, um, publications for uh, index publications for many people who are either matching into uh, residency programs at Larkin and many who are matching into residency programs outside of Larkin. Next. So these are the various congresses that uh, uh, different team members have attended, uh, some along um, our uh, residents also. Next. So the idea is, you know, we'd like to establish a journal uh, and how to build that. And I think that's kind of what we, um, what, what we'd like to do and, and, and talk about with you. Um, like right now we're trying to, uh, uh, everything is, is kind of work in progress. Like uh, today we're trying to streamline via various, um, to, through various networks, uh, just to see how that works. It looks like we're having some issues with LinkedIn or, and some of them, but I mean, some of this has to do, with how, how do we get this out to more people? How do we get more people involved and how do we channel all these energy so that you get the best outcomes? Next. Um, so the idea is to, to set, set up a, a, a obviously a low cost uh, type of platform so that you have access to it. Um, and uh, Dr. Marzman has some experience with this. And so, um, you know, that the idea is to use her and also some of the, some of our uh, folk, some of our, our people that are working in her office 
to uh, to assist. Next. Next slide, Dr. Murphy. Yeah. Um, so, among the things, obviously, we're looking at preventive medicine, um, both communicable and non communicable diseases. I mean, just a, a little bit about this. A lot of people are now, because of the COVID pandemic, concentrating on the communicable diseases, but the non communicable diseases, such as you know, uh, cardiovascular disease, it, it's, it's a huge um, impact uh, in, in probably worse than any pandemic. Um, and uh, we, we actually have and, and continue to look at projects to address the issue with uh, childhood obesity. Um, I don't know what happened with the group. There was a group out of India that was trying to look at the, uh, that issue in India as a result of the pandemic, uh, that there was an increase. I believe it went from like 14 to like 19 percent. And so there, there are actually um, programs in place. We, we currently have a program going on in uh, Colombia, in, in Bogota, in 20 schools that's targeted to elementary school children who, um, to prevent them from developing what they call metabolic syndrome, which is when you um, get to the point where you start having uh, early cardiovascular disease, diabetes, prediabetes, uh, and obviously, uh, that, that is going to have a huge impact in the economies of some of these countries that really can absorb a shock uh, to their healthcare system uh, because of the costs that are going to be involved in, in, in both medications and procedures. We're looking at, with heavy emphasis on, on social determinants of health and disparities, um, not only ethnic and racial disparities, but also disparities based on geographic location. Uh, we've seen, um, and, and I think it's been accelerated as a result of the pandemic, that, um, you know, we, 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 in the rural areas of the United States, which where most people live, um, you know, maybe not concentrated, but you add the rural areas, more people live there. Um, there, there, there have been closures of hospitals, there's lack of access uh, to uh, specialists. And one of the things that Larkin would like to do is to become a, a global leader or a national leader in establishing uh, rural training tracks, um, uh, basically uh, across the United States, uh, Puerto Rico, US Virgin Islands. We're looking at areas that are rural that don't have uh, training programs. And we'd like to start um, uh, developing those programs there. Um, in historically, rural training tracks have been uh, pretty much um, limited to family medicine, uh, but now there's a new change with the Medicare program and uh, federal government and also with ACGME where they're allowing existing uh, programs to expand and uh, they could be any program. It could be dermatology, it could be orthopedics, it could be a fellowship uh, of internal medicine. And the idea is that this is going to uh, help um, uh, help address this issue of lack of uh, physicians. We recently also entered into collaboration with uh, Western Colorado VA, where we're sending uh, our internal medicine residents to Grand Junction VA. And so far, the residents have had a great experience. We actually bought a house a couple of blocks from the VA, uh, and and the, uh, they're, they're just having a, the VA is really happy with it. They want to expand it. Um, but that's the type of work that we'd like to be doing. Um, let's see, structural needs. Um, you, want, you want to go into a little bit of the structural needs, Dr. Marsman? Yes. Doctor, as you described well, uh, our mission is to focus on uh, challenging issues in different countries. The countries that our team 11 people and professional are coming from, and they should identify what are challenging issues, what are priorities for research in their healthcare systems, in their uh, universities, academic institutions, workplaces that they are working. So we need them to organize their ideas and list, uh, compile a list of research priorities that they can they can generate ideas about it or they can run a project and they can you know form or shape a team in their countries and then they can invite the larkin health system larkin university or other people uh, uh, inside the team 11 uh, or our faculty and professionals including me and you 
to mentor and support their projects. This is uh, the way that we should organize these teams through identification of the priorities and challenges that you describe. If you have, for example, ideas about social determinants of health in your hospitals, in uh, you know a, a healthcare system in your country, or you are working for a university or academic institution that is ready to develop uh, projects about social determinants of health. So we are ready here to, to join your teams and your ideas and support those and build connections with your country's uh, Ministry of Health or universities. We can develop some agreements. Dr. Sujan, can you, uh, you show the last slide? The slide before this one. Thank you so much. So structural needs of this step is uh, organizing leader teams of adept members. If you uh, notice in the slides that Dr. Mitchell described, we have 16 people who are ready to lead. They are ready to lead research projects. So at least we have 16 people with public more than five or 10 publications. And we have more than 70 people based on the responses that we have received so far. So we should have more than it, but at least we have 70 people who escort themselves as a leader for, for research projects. And they can be proficient or experienced people who can guide other people for, for their research projects. So you should organize you should organize your ideas and you should form your teams and leadership roles with our support you know we will support you but these ideas should be should be uh, created inside your teams and inside your meetings together to have a leadership role and uh, to form those teams from people who have long term collaboration plans with team 11. That's the first uh, structural need. The second one is partnership agreements with your affiliated institutions and organizations. For example, if you are a gyneco gynecologist or you know, intensivist or a general practitioner, we're working in, uh, right now with, with a university with an institution, with a research institution, with Ministry of Health or with rural healthcare services, you can bring people from your uh, affiliated institution and organizations to, to you know, come up with agreements with Larkin. That's the way that we can organize and we can institutionalize and make it sustainable and make those type of relationship something sustainable in terms of one year or two year collaboration with the rural healthcare services in a country with a university or a public health department in a country that works and um, develops some partnership agreements mous memorandum of understanding that are some sort of agreements with larkin we can develop those partnership agreements and then you would be a project manager in the third uh, bullet of the structural needs you can see that we need project managers so that's the the, the structure of our collaboration we would have a project manager someone who is a member of team 11 and invites people and leaders or managers or institutions from their country to develop partnership agreements with Larkin Health System or Larkin University or Larkin Community Hospital, even with our department, with Department of Research and Academic Affairs. We can develop those agreements together, sign an agreement, and then you would be a project manager with the idea that you are developing the idea that matters for your country, for your healthcare system. So this is the structure that um, we, you know, develop the plans, and we would uh, improve these plans with your ideas, with your comments, and collaborations later. 
then if we had those agreements with your uh, university and we you know secured some funds for the research from countries around and from grant of uh, funds that uh, are granting some uh, funds and sponsoring this type of research projects in the United States even, if we secure those funds, we can invite fellowship uh, fellows for, for those projects. So we will develop fellowship programs inside each project. For example, if we are working on social determinants of health in one of the Middle East countries, okay? And then we will, we have a project manager there and we have a partnership agreement with the university, then we would invite fellows around to uh, play their role as a fellowship uh, attendees in those uh, research projects. So that would be the roadmap or <laughs> a futuristic plan for global research uh activities that is focused on the matters and issues and priorities of various countries the countries that you are coming from thank you so much for providing opportunity to make an a structure and you know practical ideas for the future of this part of our plan dr Mitchell, thank you perfect Sujin, are you keeping track of the people that are entering the zoom meeting yes sir okay good good yeah because i can't be on both at the same time that's good. all right we have do we have another slide this is the the last slide Dr. Yeah, this is the last this is the other one yes okay so i uh, just hope you want to open it uh, do you want to just stop sharing that's great so we just kind of wanted to start with that introduction and then um we just put in the chat the um if you want to just change change it so that uh whoever's speaking just you can take down the stop sharing the slide perfect uh so you know we, we just posted in the chat if you can fill out the form um in the chat um as far as uh your qualifications uh that would be great because uh, that'll help us gather uh, more information. And then I also want to start inviting some of our current uh, members who've been involved um, to talk a little bit about their experience. Because we have different projects going on, and we have Dr. Edmundo uh, Igna over in uh, are you in Peru, Edmundo? I'm Dr. Yes, I am now in Peru. Yes. Great, great. So tell us a little bit about what you've done with the surgical program. The um... We decided uh, initially, um, after a preliminary exploration, we decided uh, to try to organize what we was uh, calling as a surgical research lab, understanding that the idea was to put together people interested in, in general surgery. Um, and then we, we after, after, sitting, uh, after putting together a group of interested people, we decided to work not exactly in one study or one case report or one publication, but trying to design, uh, um, to develop the idea of a, of a research group focusing in surgery, in general surgery. That's why we decided to better focus in trying to create research lines, like mini nest of, of interest in, in this in certain um, uh, roots, certain aspects, certain core aspects of, of general surgery. Therefore, we, we ended up having five research lines with its own architecture, with uh, sequential studies, you know. Um, and we, we, we have been working on, on them. Uh, one of the main um, probably difficulties that we found was that um, it, is, it is critical to, to um, meet with um, people uh, motivated in, enough um, to, with the commitment, you know, to continue the, the, the group as a team. Um, we are yet learning how to uh, identify the, the, 
people to, to keep that, that team working um, in a continuous way. This is one, one uh, um, uh, of course, of course, we, uh, we are moving forward uh, slowly, but moving forward. And we hope that we will soon see um, not one, not two, but many, almost at the same time, many, many studies. And uh, what makes us happy is that the fact that um, we, um, we decided, uh, we think that we were right by deciding, uh, organizing, presenting, and planning research lines because this gives us the, chain, the, the, the possibility to, we know in a, before, in advance, what we're going to do after that study. We have already a plan for two or three in line. This is a very interesting for us. We're very happy for us. And this is one that I wanted to share with you. Thank you. Thank you. Ricardo, you want to talk a little bit about the IRB? Ricardo, you may be muted. Dr. Marsman, can you? Yes, Dr. Sure. Uh, we have an IRB department in our depart in our research uh, office. Dr. Ricardo, you can yes. explain about it. Welcome. Sorry, there was a glitch. I got knocked off. I'm back on. Oh. Um, so yes, yeah, so, uh, for the IRB, we're here to help every study that has any human subjects. Um, through the IRB, as Dr. Marzman has said, we have a, a form that has to be filled out. Once that's filled, it gets sent to be analyzed, uh, to be reviewed before it gets to the IRB committee. So it's like a pre-review just to make sure that we get everything organized well before it gets to the IRB committee board. Um, we wanna make sure that we help streamline the process and make every research that's coming with Larkin that has every potential to have human safety always foremost in the forefront. Um, and we're here to help with every research that comes our way. And we definitely want to get more involved with everybody. And Team 11 has been uh, very helpful uh, as well with having committees that have helped reviewed IRB papers that are coming in. Um, it's on our research website. You'll see the forms are actually there plotted already. So you could actually click and send it to the IRB department, to the DRAA at LarkinHospital.com. Um, once that is done, we will analyze it, send you a report where you can make your corrections and we will go through the pre-application uh, process before it gets to the IRB committee. Very good. Um... Dr. Marsman, any other team members that wanna wants to talk about their experience? Uh, I think we have we have a few more minutes. Dr. Sujan, are you ready to? Uh, yes. Talk a little, um, talk a little bit about experience um, last years. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Good to see you um, after this hectic, uh, you know, like mass process. Uh, I hope you all are doing well. So. Yeah, I have been, so my name is uh, Susan Porel. So I have been working as a resource coordinator uh, for Larkin almost like more than a year now. And um, directly and indirectly, I have been helping neurology and um, psychiatry department to go through like a lot of resource process. And uh, I have been coordinating team 11 to DRA office and uh, try to connect um, team 11 DRA office and the faculty department. So um, during this process, of course, like uh, we are a group of like more than 1500 people now. And with the more people, we have more challenges coming in. And, but at the same time, we have so much of achievement over the years and that will, uh, you know, like directly reflect like what we can achieve through Team 11. Uh, and uh, so like uh, what I see in the, coming times like a lot of the people has more challenges on is like the navigation and we are trying our best uh, to make it more uh, connectable to different department with their coordinators so that uh, your ideas can be you know like move forward and we can get done with the project on time uh, so like uh, the survey that we have been uh, we are conducting right now will help us to find out more potential candidate uh, that will be helping in our different specialty projects 
uh, that will be su supporting you and help you with the mentorship for various projects that you would be interested in. Uh, so hopefully, like after we run this um, uh, survey, we'll have more clear data and uh, with the help of the DRA office, we'll have more potential candidate who will be helping with uh, different um, departments that different specialty groups that we have in Telegram, and uh, that way we can navigate it better. And uh, um, yes, yeah, so that's that's one of the challenges. And so what I would um, you know like love to suggest from my experience is like once you are in the team eleven. So there are, um, you know, like different ways people um, like to get involved. Uh, one of the thing is like, of course, like we, because of the high volume of medical graduates and medical students uh, who are interested in research, we will not be able to, sometimes we will not be able to provide like, you know, um, uh, projects for all of them. But at the same time, we are open to the ideas to those people who are, who are new to the group uh, and based on the idea, we are, you know, like uh, we can help or navigate to find out whether that idea is doable or not. And we can uh, guide them further. And, you know, like we, that way we can have more projects and more people will be benefited. So if we have like some leadership experience already, just reach out to us, all the coordinators for the DRA office, and we can help plan, uh, you know, like for the better of the particular specialty but if you are just new to the group just reach out to us and just share us the idea or share the idea to the group coordinator for each um, telegram group so that they can streamline the process and um, everybody will have a, a good chance to be involved in a lot of projects um, that's kind of like the challenges that we are seeing right now and i just wanted to tell you like okay since I started with as a, a new member here, now I'm kind of coordinating the groups. So I started myself from the scratch. I didn't have much experience. And now I'm leading group learning from each one of you. So everything is possible. So this is a very positive group. Um, it's just like how we take the things that make a difference. So that much for today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sujan. And Dr. Jonathan. Can you share your experience with us? So let's just say that since starting with the vaccine initiative team and team 11 at the same time, it's been a roller coaster ride for two years. Being a VP, finding vaccine appointments for people at the same time, trying to find projects for research. And when you're collaborating with people from all over the world, you're just talking to a computer. You're talking on a cell phone, voice to text, there's gonna be misunderstandings. Even I had misunderstandings as well too, but we produced a lot of good stuff, a lot of good stuff that went to different uh, conventions. Uh, Api, the local Indian Physicians of Young Origin Conference in Texas, Florida Society of Neurology. You work your, you work your butt off in Team 11 demonstrating that you have the gusto for research and you care about what Dr. Michelle is bringing forward to the world, and Dr. Mann as well too, it can get you what you want. It can, you can do almost anything good. That's, you want to help out with the uh, neuromuscular medicine. You want to help out with pain management, sports medicine. You want to help out in anything and everything, whatever you want. Tailor your residency application to whatever fields you want. We can help you with that. I can help you with that as well too if you need it. Uh, current resident right now, thermoscopic medicine, but you can get what you want. And yeah, that's my spiel. <laughs> Great incentives, Jonathan, thank you. Dr. Angela, Angela is working with us to develop educational content for research liaisons for residents who are educating about research inside the Larkin. Are you ready to talk? Dr. Angela, share your experience as well. Uh, hello, Dr. Seema, thank you. And thank you, Dr. Michelle, for this great meeting today. Uh, we've been working together with Mars Yetu and the research fellows and Dr. Seema to make uh, educational contact for the liaisons. It's been, uh, we've been working with residents and fellows. Uh, it's opened an opportunity for me personally to get in touch with a lot of residents and faculty hear their opinion, uh, develop research ideas, and uh, 
discuss uh, new uh, new ideas and how we can move for, uh, further. It's been a very great learner experience for me. Like I started like any other team 11 member, I joined the group last year and slowly, slowly I've uh, uh, been helped by a lot of residents, by the research faculty. And now I've been, so I just want to thank you all. Thank you, Angela, for all of your efforts. I see Dr. Rish Badua, she is our research fellow. Can you share your experience as a fellow in our department, Dr. Rishpa? Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Seema. Thank you, Dr. Michelle, for this meeting. Um, I am very proud to say that we've been able to accomplish multiple facets of research here at Larkin. We've been able to help a lot of departments um, for our you know, research projects, scholarly activities. Um, as well as CME lectures like Dr. Seema provided. Um, we are here to help you. You know, we've given you links to reach out to us, which connect you directly to Dr. Seema and help you accomplish your projects. She will be able to give you feedback through those research links. And yes, please reach out to us and in any capacity that we can help you, we'll be here. To make more incentives for people who are applying for our research fellowship, Please share what have you learned in our department? I feel like I've been very blessed to have worked with you directly. Um, you know, learn step by step every research, you know, methodologies that I can help um, learn and provide residents with those knowledge to help them accomplish their projects. Um, even other like creating like scholarly material and content for CME lectures, I learned everything from you and I was able to help different departments that way. So just working in this fellowship has been an amazing opportunity to directly work with you and you know the residents and the departments. Thank you so much. I Thank see you. Dr. Emra Khan, Dr. Emra Khan. Can you share your, your experience as well? We have invited Dr to develop some projects and your research liaisons, am I right? Yes, uh, my name is Dr. Ibran Khan and uh, it has been an honor. I joined it a year back and uh, uh, I, I tried to be a part of it, personal reasons, COVID, family deaths. But what I see interesting at this point is that, that international uh, organizations can collaborate with Larkin to make it a global thing. I see it something huge. Uh, we have, I am uh, an internist at Sandeman Provincial Hospital, Koita. It's in Pakistan. It's it's a suburban area, but we do have uh, a research community. They are working, they're producing research papers. They're producing lots and lots of rare cases. Uh, we, we border with Afghanistan. So practically there is no healthcare system. So they are, they, 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 there are so many rare uh, 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 cases that they're writing about for, for a hospital like mine and for a practitioner like myself to, to expand our reach. Uh, um, that's honestly what I, I look at. Uh, I'm done with USMLE, so probably um, I would be resident next year, I'll be applying for, um, for, for my residency. So, I see it something that I can manage with my residency. That is something huge. That is well, something very unique, very, I've not seen any program providing that. So uh, I, I'm really excited uh, for, for your future plans and, and each and everything you talked about. Thank you, Thank Doctor. You. Thank you. And sorry for wrong pronunciation, Doctor Imran Khan. <laughs> and I see Ilona. <laughs> Sorry, Doctor. Uh, Ilona uh, has um, reported and uh, presented her poster recently in an international conference. Can you share your experience, Ilona? She is the coordinator of our data ana analytics committee in Team 11. 
Hello, hello everyone. Hello, Dr. Masban. Hello, Dr. Jack Michel. I am glad to be with you today. And uh, I am glad that I presented uh, our research on the Congress on the Frontier of, for, from the European Society of the Cardiology. Uh, it was, uh, uh, we have a good feedback uh, from uh, different professors from uh, Harvard professors that visit the, uh, the poster and we had the good feedback from the BMC journal and uh, she wanted to collaborate with us for uh, researches, uh, especially in the meta-analysis uh, field. Uh, and she said that for uh, a future project, uh, she is uh, waiting eagerly for our research. And um, also um, I had been like, uh, uh, one year and a half with the Team 11. Um, uh, I am very glad for the uh, members that are there and for the collaborations. Um, uh, I would um, like that in the future to have more members for the uh, statistical uh, part that I am uh, on the I would like for the analyst part because uh, now we, we have three active members and uh, I want to help uh, for uh, projects that come and want help uh, for the analyze part especially and would be very uh, open to uh, accept uh, new members and uh, to provide more help. And uh, uh, I am aiming for uh, working on a new project for the European Society of the Cardiology. It is the big Congress that will, it is like the most important for them that will be held in Barcelona in August. Uh, I have an idea uh, that uh, I am working on and uh, I am uh, like uh, very glad for all this uh, team. And I thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sema, because uh, she provided very uh, good um, uh, feedback for our poster and uh, were very helpful. And um, I think uh, all the members of uh, our search uh, uh, made it helpful uh, uh, and uh, made the success. And I am uh, waiting now uh, on the next uh, publication for the European Society. They will publish even an uh, interview that uh, I gave uh, from them. And uh, uh, let's see for the future. Thank you, Ilona. I'm so sorry that I, we cannot invite all of you to talk about your amazing experiences with Team 11, but uh, just let you know that we are, uh, you know, thankful to your interest first of all your enthusiasm and passion about working with this group and uh, we are pro proud of all of you and your achievements and accomplishments i know that many of team 11 members uh, got matched during last educational year and th that was a good you know idea to have all of them here to congratulate them and their achieve to celeb celebrate their achievements last year. But we have Farah, and I invite Farah to share her experiences and collaborations with Team 11. Dr. Farah. Hi everyone. Hello, Dr. Michelle. Hello, Dr. Seema. Thanks for inviting me. And I've been a part of Larkin teams, multiple teams um, for the last two years. I started as a contact tracer um, and then I started the research and the social media team and the vaccine team. Um, and it's been amazing. Um, this year I matched into internal medicine at Larkin. So it's even better now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and my experience so far with the Larkin teams has been great. I've learned pretty much everything about research from the Larkin Team 11. And um, so for all those people who are here and who are gonna watch later, um, I'm always here to help you guys. And if you need anything from me, just know that I'm here and feel free to contact me. I'm gonna leave my email ID in the chat. So if anybody needs anything, I'm here. Thank you so much, Dr. Farah. Dr. Mitchell, can you please? Of course, thank you. So uh, thank you everybody for, for contributing. Uh, you know, one of the things I, I, I see sometimes is people, sometimes when they got into the group, they get a little frustrated 
because you know they expect things to happen very quickly. Uh, and, and sometimes it takes a little time. Uh, but the, the one thing I'd, I'd like to urge you is if, if, if you're aware of other people in your country, maybe some people with experience, people without experience, the more people join, the better because people can help other people. Um, and so we're, we're open. There's no limit. There's no cost to this, to being part of this group. So I think, uh, you know, the more we can get, um, you know, a bigger participation, the better. Uh, and it's going to make us a better, a better team. You know, and, and those of you who are like looking into residency training, you remember that sometimes it's not the publication that matters, but sometimes the ability to work with other people. So this, this type of team gives you the opportunity to interact with other people and watch, you know, have other people watch you, how you interact. And I can tell you that, you know, many people that end up matching into residency programs, if that's your ultimate goal, uh, you know, that's a big part of how people get selected. Uh, you know, sometimes people just get selfish or they get upset or they, or they want to do their own project. And you can see that. And, and, you know, healthcare these days is a very collaborative activity. Uh, so we'd like to see people that help other people, not people that just want to come in and do, do their paper and publish it and, um, you know, and, and that's it. So, um, you know, a lot of the skills that you, that you, that you show, I think, um, can be very helpful uh, in, in making, in making uh, the right decisions. I mean, ultimately, when we take care of patients, we all need to work collaboratively and help each other. And that's really, uh, I can tell you, for Larkin, that's what we really look forward to. But I have to say, you know, probably half of the team matched elsewhere, didn't, um, you know, matched at other programs. So, um, I think that's that's uh, that, that that's a testament for the type of work that Dr. Marsman is doing and and our collaborators are doing. Excellent points, Doctor, because uh, you know the criteria for selection of the people for uh, positions includes all of these skills. The first and best is behavioral skills: how to work with teams, transparency, openness. Uh, being approachable, patience, and being team-oriented. That, that is very important to prioritize team benefits to your you know, personal benefits. It is something that would be supervised and monitored by the program directors, and they will look into it in addition to scientific skills, to scores, and many other skills that you will earn uh, in the rotation. So, and in these team interactions, you will show a mature personality of yourself, how you can help the other people, as Dr. Mitchell told. The last point that I want to um, bring to this meeting is now we want to know the people who have skills and competencies to edit, to edit and be a member of editorial board of an academic channel. So it needs, you know, higher level of ex expertise and experience with research and publications. Any of you that have confidence and is ready to collaborate with our department as an editor for different methods, you can you can make yourself as, as specific to one of the methodologies. For example, a reviewer for case reports a reviewer for quality improvement reports, a reviewer for clinical trial reports, review of evidence or systematic reviews. You can suggest us, please propose your names to Dr. Sujan to develop a list of uh, people who are ready to be a member of editorial board or team for an academic channel. So uh, it would enable us to establish academic channel and make uh, a platform easy platform for your publications a, a, you know low cost and easy platform to, pu to publish your productions we would be grateful to that if you let us know those competencies that would be very valuable to our team thank you Dexter. excellent so so let's please please let dr marston know if you have those skills i i forgot to thank to thank farah for helping me with the about uh, letters of recommendation that uh, many of you have request, you know, when you request a letter of recommendation, we like to make it very accurate. So we want to be very specific about what you published, what you did, because, you know, people get just the fact that I write a letter of recommendation does not, it's not going to guarantee you admission into any program. What, what guarantees you admission to a program is what you do, what you actually do. 
So that's why we want to make it very specific to you. So how many hours you worked, uh, what, what have you published, uh, who have you worked with? So all of those things are the skills that you need to develop, especially if you're looking for a letter of recommendation. And FARA has been doing an amazing job uh, making them very personal. Uh, and I think they, they helped a lot of people actually get into programs. So FARA, thank you so much for your help. It's been an honor, sir. Thank you. Well, with that said, Dr. Marsman, do you have any final closing thoughts? I mean, we're closing on the hour. Um, um, just appreciate to all of you for joining this meeting and allocating your time and being a part of our of our amazing team, a synergic team that everyone tries to help uh, other people for the growth and prosperity. Thank you all, and thanks, Dr. Mitchell, for supporting all of us. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.